So my name is Dr. Steve G. Jones. I'm a, a clinical hypnotherapist. I have a uh, my bachelor degree. Bachelor's degree is in psychology. My master's degree is in adult education. My specialist degree is in uh, educational administration, and my doctorate is in educational administration. So I've uh, my mainly I've studied psychology and education. Uh, on the side. I have also studied uh, astral projection, so that's outside of my academic study, but I've been interested in it for a long time uh, since I was uh, about 15 years old, so that's about 30 years now I've been interested in the topic. And so today I'm going to talk about how to relax properly and prepare the mind and body for astral projection. And I'm also going to talk about the power of the subconscious mind and how important it is to remove limiting beliefs and to free your astral body. And I'm going to share with you tips on how to strengthen your skills and ability so that you can successfully astral project. And I'm also going to uh, review what it feels like to astral project and opportunities that you have once you are in the astral plane. And of course, I'm going to cover uh, how to safely experience astral projection. So when we start out, you may be wondering what is astral projection? Well, astral projection uh, starts with an idea that we are having a three-dimensional existence here. Uh, we, and in the fourth dimension, we call, I like to call it the fourth dimension, the astral plane. Now, uh, of course, Einstein said the fourth dimension is time, and, and the fourth dimension has been used a lot of different ways uh, by different teachers and different bodies of thought, but just understand that in the, in the metaphysical realm, when we say the fourth dimension, uh, we're not talking about time, we're talking about something called the astral plane, which is on a higher vibratory, uh, at a higher vibratory rate than what the third dimension is. And that's why it's not... Uh, perceive, that's why we're not able to perceive it in our everyday lives as we are inside our physical bodies. So the astral plane is uh, superimposed on top of our existence. When I say on top of, I don't mean uh, sort of like this. I mean it's, it's overlapping it. So it is here among us at all times. Uh, we're just not aware of it because it is in a, a different dimension. So when we look at the astral plane and we talk about what is in the astral plane, uh, there are a number of things in the astral plane, just like there are a number of things in your three-dimensional existence. You know, you may have uh, you know, friends around you, you may have physical uh, structures, uh, you may have, uh, you know, uh, walls, uh, there may be animals around you that are non-human entities. Well, it's the same with the fourth dimension. All of these type creatures exist and, and structures exist as well. So, whereas in the third dimension you have uh, the walls to your home and the walls to your classroom, in the fourth dimension there are walls to other structures which you're not able to perceive in your physical body, but they exist in the astral world nonetheless. So we have creatures, uh, we have uh, ourselves, our astral bodies exist in the fourth dimension, not the physical part of us that, that you see now and when you look at yourself, but the, the part that's at the higher vibratory rate, the astral body is in the fourth dimension. Uh, also the astral bodies of everyone around you, they are currently existing as is yours in the fourth dimension. So we have structures, we have, uh, we have creatures. Now when I say creatures, I mean there are, there are entities in the astral world. I'm not talking about um, a dog being in the astral world, although that is the case as well, but I'm talking about additional creatures that you're not able to see in the physical world. So we have what we would call ghosts or entities uh, that are disembodied, that are no longer tied to a body. We have ourselves and our friends who are currently inhabiting a body. Uh, we have structures and we have creatures. So there's a lot going on there. It's a very full life in the astral world, uh, but we are not able to see it normally 
in our three-dimensional existence. Uh, some people can, most people cannot, until they are fully into the astral world, either through death by, by leaving the physical body or by astral projection while they're still alive. So let's talk about how the astral components work. The astral body stays within the physical body, but it can leave at certain times. You may have heard uh, stories about people having surgery and they uh, describe floating above the exam room, exam table and seeing the doctor, seeing their body, hearing the conversation, seeing what's going on. Well, it's perfectly explainable that they would hear the conversation uh, because they're hearing their, their ears don't close even though their eyes do so they could record the conversation but explaining how they saw the procedure and saw people leave the room and come back with their eyes closed that's more difficult to explain so uh, a very plausible explanation is the idea of astral projection so we do have what we might call evidence of astral projection when we have people undergoing surgery and having a recollection of what they saw during surgery and what happened to them, things they shouldn't have been able to know because their eyes were closed. So we have the idea that when we astral project, we leave our physical body. Our, our physical body stays still, stays where it is, at, and we leave our physical body. We, so we have instances of that during surgery. Uh, sometimes when you dream, maybe you've had dreams of falling or flying. Those are examples, uh, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes those are examples of astral projection. Your body, your, your, your spiritual body was leaving your physical body. And you have a recollection of that, which your mind may not, know, not have known how to interpret, so perhaps it put it into the context of a dream to make it make sense to you. Uh, we also have what we call the silver cord. The silver cord connects the physical body to the astral body and can be of infinite length. It can, it can expand and contract uh, and it, it, can, it can expand infinitely. So the silver cord is something that exists in the fourth dimension. Uh, it attaches from the umbilicus of our body, you know, our belly button, to the umbilicus, which would be the belly button, of the astral body. And so it keeps us connected. As long as we are alive, our physical body is alive, the astral, the silver cord is uh, in, uh, in contact with the physical body so that if we were to get lost in the astral world or go as far as we wanted to, distance doesn't matter, we would still come back to our physical body uh, when we wake up or when we finish astral projecting because of the connection of the silver cord. Uh, so that leads us to the idea that there are no limitations of space or time. These are three-dimensional uh, constraints which do not constrain us in the fourth dimension. So whereas we have uh, limitations of how far we might uh, walk in one day or how long it might take us to walk or fly or drive in one day, in the astral world we don't have that. We can instantly move from one location to another uh, just by using thought. So in the astral world, uh, you won't need any plane tickets to get anywhere. You just think about where you want to go and you will instantly move from where you are in the astral world to that location. Uh, and you may be aware of current research about this in the physical world uh, where they're using the idea that Einstein developed of uh, teleportation, which is uh, the idea of uh, entanglement where you have one uh, particle that is uh, similar to another particle, it's, it's connected, it's related to another particle, and so when, some, when something happens to this particle, it, it affects the other particle. Uh, currently, current research uh, has, has shown that they can put together a, a something of, of small mass and transport it, I, I believe the record is uh, 60 miles now. So we do have teleportation slowly developing in the physical world. Of course, the limitations of teleportation in the physical world and our three-dimensional world are that uh, the, the, the particles that communicate with the other particles are not the same particles, so it becomes uh, different when it uh, quote-unquote moves to the new location. However, it would be a reasonable uh, representation 
of that of that group of particles, and they're getting uh, science is advancing at such a rate that they're able to tra uh, transport more and more particles. So this idea of moving instantaneously from one location to another location in the astral world uh, seems uh, odd and unusual and perhaps impossible until we look at our own physical world and we see that we are currently developing that technology in the three-dimensional world. So when we talk about how to astral project, uh, it's important to have uh, some sort of formula. If someone were to uh, take a, uh, an airplane, the, uh, the pilot would have a checklist to go through before takeoff. And this is important for the safety of the the passengers and of course the pilot and the airplane itself so we should have a checklist also before astral projecting now as I mentioned you can do it automatically just by uh, going to sleep sometimes you will astral project uh, you can do it during surgery but those are not controlled times neither of those cases are are very controlled so we want to do it in a controlled way the way to do that is to first of all take a a brief nap during the day. If you have a, a certain night that you want to astral project, take a brief nap during that day. The idea is you're going to get uh, some rest. And so you're going to be more likely to be able to astral project that night. This is just a formula that works, it's a formula that I've used ever since I started doing this in the 1980s, and it works very well. Uh, I also prefer to have nothing going on during that day, so I prefer to do that on the weekend. So I don't want to, if I'm going to astral project consciously that night, I don't want to have a busy day. I want to have a day where I'm not doing much, such as the weekend, and I'm going to take a nap during that day. And then I want to go to bed at a normal time, whatever the average normal time for me to go to bed is, I will go to bed at that time. And I also will eat light meals during that day so that I am prepared. Now if you have if you have experience with this or if you get experience with this and you find something works for you that I haven't mentioned or something that I have mentioned doesn't work for you, then you can make modifications accordingly so that you can have the best experience. Uh, so when you are ready to astral project, you will lie down on your back, uh, make sure you are very comfortable, and close your eyes. Again, these are things that work for me and for the majority of people who I train. And if you find something else works, feel free to use that. So lie down on your back at your normal bedtime. At the end of that day, make sure you're comfortable uh, with your eyes closed. And you can use relaxing music with or without words if you want, but nothing exciting. Uh, you do not want to use any music that is exciting in any way. So you would focus on something such as moving your astral hand. Now when I say astral hand, you have a, you have a physical hand, but you also have an astral component of your physical hand. You have an astral body that is identical to your physical body. So this makes it very easy for preparing to astral project. You can focus on moving an astral finger and you wouldn't move your physical fingers at all or physical body but you focus on moving that component which is the astral part of it and you will be able to feel this when it happens uh, eventually you will be able to move more than one finger astral finger that is not your physical fingers and you will feel the difference when you experience it and then move your astral hand. I'm moving my physical hand just to demonstrate, but your physical hand would not move, just your astral hand. So once you do this, you can begin moving an arm or a leg, uh, your torso. This happens over time, so it doesn't all happen the first night that you're experiencing this. So tonight, if you want to experiment with this, you can work on raising an astral finger or an astral hand. Uh, following nights you can work on uh, getting out an astral leg. The idea is eventually you're going to be able to move your entire body out of your physical body. So whereas ideally you would do this on a day that you've had a nap and you've uh, prepared and you've got relaxing music, if you want to just 
go for it tonight and see what happens, you can do that. So you would just lie down on your back with your eyes closed comfortably as you're going to sleep at your normal bedtime and then work on moving uh, something out of your physical body. And you're going to ha find that movement happens by thinking, not by moving your muscles themselves. So as you think about this, uh, it's going to be able to happen. It's a little different than moving your physical body, so you're going to have to learn the mechanics of it as you work on it. And each night you'd add a different area, you know, legs, arms, shoulders, etc. And you should be able to have your astral body get out of your physical body and look at your physical body, sort of like the, or, or exactly like the, uh, the stories I've told you about the uh, people getting out of their physical body during surgery. We have a lot of people who report that they had a, uh, an out-of-body experience during surgery. So much like them, you will be able to look at your physical body. Now, uh, levitation is, uh, is easy in the astral world, so it's not as if you have this astral body coming out that's limited by gravity. Uh, it can float, as it were. So you can move above your body very easily and turn around and look back at your body. And you'll be able to see things in both the third dimension and the fourth dimension. So I mentioned there are walls and people and creatures in the third dimension, our everyday existence, but they also exist in the fourth dimension. They're different walls and more people because you see people who are also astral projecting and you see people who are deceased and you see creatures that don't exist in the third dimension. So you're able to see all of that when you're in the fourth dimension. You can still see everything in the third dimension, physical people, physical beings, physical walls, but you can also see those things that exist only in the fourth dimension. Uh, and so I want you to realize that you should give yourself time with this rather than uh, rushing into it. And, and you can rush into it tonight if you want and experiment with it, but you need to give yourself time to develop these skills. And you may at this point be wondering, well, what does it feel like? What does it feel like when I experience this astral plane? Well, it feels, the first time I did it, I was in high school and I was, uh, I was about 15 years old. And I had been working on it diligently every night, working on getting a body part out, working on experiencing it. And one night I finally had uh, success in a military high school. It was called, it still exists, it was called Riverside Military Academy, and it's in Gainesville, Georgia. And I had an experience that night when I went to sleep that I, that I woke up and I was outside of my room. Now, in military school, a military high school, uh, it was the United States Army uh, High School. And so the rules were very strict. You were not supposed to be out of your room after 10 p.m. And when I, when I became consciously aware, I was outside of my room. In fact, I was very far from my room. I was the length of uh, at least one soccer field from my room. And I thought, I've got to get back to my room. I'm in, I'm in trouble. I'm going to get caught and this is not good. And my body, felt like pure energy. I felt energy surging through my body. And on top of that, one of the uh, commanding officers, uh, an adult, because we were a high school, but one of the adult uh, officers was walking uh, past me. And, and so I was hiding. I was hiding behind uh, a vehicle that I found that, that was in front of me. I was hiding behind that. Now, I didn't understand at that time that he wasn't able to see me because I, it was just my astral body. My physical body was back in my, in my bed uh, sleeping. My astral body was out and he was not able to see it, but I didn't understand that. Uh, also, in that experience, uh, someone was with me uh, who was not a friend of mine. And someone in the school who I didn't uh, associate with because he was uh, not a good student, he was always in trouble, and so I didn't want to associate with him. Uh, but I knew his name, I knew who he was, and he was there with me. So I thought, oh, this is terrible. 
you know, I'm, I'm a football field for my room. It's after 10 p.m. I'm supposed to be in my room. I'm with this, this bad student who's not supposed to, you know, we're not supposed to be out and I'm associating with this person. The commanding officer is over there and we're going to get caught. And, and, then, the, and then it was gone. And then that experience was gone and I woke up the next morning. And I thought, oh, thank, thank goodness, that was just a dream. I'm so lucky that that didn't actually happen. And so later on that day, I saw this person, this, this uh, fellow student, who I would never talk to because I didn't want to associate with him. And I said one simple question. I said, what did you dream about last night? And he said, I dreamt about you. And I said, well, that's interesting. What was the dream about? And he said, well, we were outside, we were in trouble, and the commandant was walking over there, and we were both afraid, we were hiding behind the vehicle, we thought we were going to get caught. And I said, wow, that's, that's amazing. And I told him uh, about the experience. I said, I had, I had the same dream. And I think he thought I was crazy at that time, because I don't think that he knew anything about astral projection, Somehow, coincidentally, his astral body was just out that night when he was asleep because he had no interest in astral projection. He had no idea how to do it. I just happened to coincidentally uh, run into him when I was astral projecting. So that convinced me at age 15 that what I was studying, what I was doing was not just theory, it was real. And so I became very, uh, very much interested in it, and I, and I continued studying it, and I've developed uh, programs about it, about astral projection. Uh, one of them is the theartofastralprojection.com. We've created that website, theartofastralprojection.com, so that you can learn more about it. But I, did, I dedicated my life uh, at that time to learning more about everything I could. And I was also studying hypnosis at that time. And it really encouraged me at that time to look further into all of these things. So you may wonder, well, what are the opportunities? You know, it's nice that you got outside of your body. It's nice that you experienced that. But what can you practically do with this knowledge and this ability? Well, realize that you can go anywhere you want to go in the astral world. <clears throat> now, you never go anywhere you're not invited. You never go anywhere that's top secret or that the, the government wouldn't want you to go to or anything like that. <clears throat> you never go to anyone's house where you're not invited. But other than that, you can go anywhere you want to go. And you go there just by thinking, just by thinking that you want to go there. And you also want to test what you're doing to make sure <clears throat> that it's actually working. One way to test it, to make sure that you're not just dreaming this, is to have someone put a, uh, a card, you know, have a deck of cards, playing cards, <clears throat> and take one of the cards and put it face up somewhere where you'd like to go. Somewhere where you'd like to go and, and be in your astral body, you want to have them take that card and put it up, face up, there. So let's say, for example, you're going to astral project on a certain night. Let's say you're going to astral project on Sunday night. Have a friend put a card in, let's say it's going to be in their, uh, their house that you're going to astral project to and you have their permission to go there. Have a friend put a, uh, a card face up you know, seven, eight, uh, jack, queen, king, some uh, card that you, that you don't know what it is, but they do because they're putting it in that room. And when you astral project, go to that room and the next day tell them what that card is. That's a way to test what you're doing, to see if it's actually working, to see if, if what you think you're doing, you're actually doing. And so if that actually is working, then you're going to have proof that it's working because you're going to be able to tell them the card that you saw. You can do this with anything. If you don't have cards, you can write a number on a piece of paper or a letter on a piece of paper and you tell them what that was. So now you have a practical tool that you can use. You can see, you can go places and you can see things. You can do what we call remote viewing, uh, which is very powerful. 
So you want to realize that as you develop these powers, you don't want to abuse them. You want to use them, but, but not abuse them, not use them for any, uh, pow anything that just gives you something, but takes away from somebody else. So be uh, conscientious with this information. So what you want to do is uh, surround yourself with, with light. Imagine a, a pure white light around you when you travel. Now, uh, as you begin to get better at this, and your astral body becomes uh, able to come out, you're going to find what I found, which is there are, there are creatures in the astral world which want to uh, have fun, and some of them want to interfere with what you're doing and you want to protect yourself from that. So surrounding yourself, just and just do this by imagining it, surrounding yourself with a pure white light around your body, sort of like a bubble around your body, and you create that just by imagining it. This can be very helpful for you in everyday life also. If you feel that negative thoughts are coming to you, you imagine this protective white light around you, this bubble that nothing can penetrate. This can be very helpful psychologically to you if you deal with any negativity to help it just bounce off from that. You're protected by it, it bounces off from you. In the astral world, it's very important that you have that uh, because it's going to allow you to, uh, to avoid these negative interactions with what we call elementals, which are basic uh, creatures of the astral world, sort of like cats or dogs. Uh, they have limited IQ and they just look for uh, things they can do to uh, interfere with what you're doing. They don't mean any harm, but they can be annoying. So the white light can protect you from that. Uh, they don't have any negative agenda. They're just uh, a nuisance. Uh, also, it can protect you from negative beings or what we would call evil spirits. Uh, you may have heard people talk about evil spirits. You may have different thoughts about that. But there are entities in the astral world that have negative intentions and you can protect yourself from them by this protective white light. Uh, and keep in mind that you should not do any harm yourself and your goal is to just experience the, the world and the astral planes and realize that these negative uh, spirits, they, they would like to attach themselves to you so you want to uh, repel them by imagining this white light. And if, if you're religious, if you have a belief in God, then you can use that to your advantage also by imagining that God is protecting you. So the white light and or God, uh, whatever works for you, will be very powerful in giving you an advantage. Now I, I see that we are um, 45 minutes in from the time that we were supposed to begin, and so my understanding now is that uh, I should stop and give time for questions. So that's what I'm going to do now. So if you have any questions, I will be glad to take them at this time. Can the astral projection affect the uh, entities in the 3D world? Uh, to some degree it can. So the question was, can astral projection affect the entities in the 3D world? Is that the question? Okay, we'll go with that. Uh, it can to some degree. I'm sorry? Okay, we'll go with that question. So the uh, to some degree it can. So uh, it, it cannot affect them in this way. So say for example you have uh, somebody's at, let's say this is somebody's astral body, and you with your astral body you 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 push it over, or something like that. You would never do that, I would hope. But let's say you you, fit, you push it over, your astral body pushes their astral body over. <clears throat> that would that would have no effect on their physical body because their physical body hasn't moved. The way that you can affect the, the three-dimensional world in the fourth dimension is more on the psychological level. Let's say you meet someone in the, three, in the fourth dimension, you're talking to their soul, you're talking to their, their spirit, their, their astral body in the fourth dimension, and you're telling them some things, hopefully positive things. You're, you're telling them, you're talking to them, you're, you're saying good things about them or to them. Those things are become those things are actually heard by them. So they may wake up and think it was a dream. They may think it was some sort of a lucid dream. They may think that they just imagined it all. Yet it actually happened for them. It was an experience, and it does become part of their memories. So that can have some sort of uh, effect in the three dimensional world. Next question. Sir, are there some dangers in astral projection? Yes. Uh, like uh, I've heard about sleep paralysis. 
sleep sleep what was it sleep paralysis sleep paralysis okay well sleep yeah. par sleep paralysis thank you good question so the question is are there dangers in the astral world yeah. and specifically sort of about sleep paralysis sleep paralysis is what happens when you're dreaming so it's natural for your body to have sleep paralysis in fact that's good when your astral when your physical let's say this is your physical body it's lying down if you're having an astral experience in which you're walking around and you're uh, you know maybe waving your arms and maybe running uh, just like any dream you would have you don't want your physical body acting those things out your physical body should be perfectly still that's called sleep paralysis that happens to protect you so that you don't act out your dreams think about all the things you do in your dreams running jumping uh, swimming anything you do it you don't want your body doing all those actions so your body naturally has goes into something called sleep paralysis so that's not something negative that's something positive that you want to have happen uh, now what you may be asking about is your your physical body becoming paralyzed beyond that once you're already supposed to be back to your physical body that doesn't happen it doesn't happen as a result of a dream uh, or a lucid dream it also doesn't happen as a result of astral projection so sleep paralysis is not a concern um, what is a concern would be the the entities in the astral world who want to attach themselves to you or do something negative to you and you prevent that by the the white light next question uh, sir, I yes. want to know that uh, uh, can you actually pass through things or uh, you can actually move them uh, when you are in the astral world? Or you just pass through things? Physical things, three-dimensional things uh, such as a, a phone. Let's say you you happen to see my uh, my iPhone when you're in the in the in the fourth dimension. You know you're floating in the fourth dimension. You see my iPhone, and you want to grab it and pick it up. You will not be able to do that. So your fourth dimension body, as as you mentioned, would pass right through it. Your astral hand would pass right through my iPhone or any other three-dimensional uh, object. So how many nights did it took for you to, to be able to astral project? When I was working on it, it took me about uh, three weeks to get to the point where I had that dream. <clears throat> but I was able to move parts of my body. I was able to move my astral arm out after a few days. So after a few days, I was able to move my astral arm out. After uh, about a week, I was able to move both arms out. Um, after about two weeks, I was able to turn a little bit. but. It wasn't until I had that dream, or what I thought was a dream, which was actually an astral projection experience, uh, that I realized that I was actually able to do it. And that was uh, at about three weeks in, I was able to, I had that dream. Uh, so we have videos or maybe audios on YouTube, uh, which combine this effect of uh, binaural beats and some sort of subliminal messages, which uh, I mean, they are supposed to help you to be able to assert it. Are those effective? I think, <clears throat> I think anything that relaxes you is effective. So binaural beats or binaural tones, as they're also called, are, are, can be very effective uh, because uh, they relax you. Uh, binaural tones, since this is a classroom, I'll, I'll, for those who don't know what those are, uh, you have one frequency in one channel or one ear and a different frequency in, the, in another channel or the other ear. The difference between those frequencies is a tone that you will hear in the center of your head. Uh, it doesn't actually exist, but you hear it sort of like a phantom tone. Uh, that was discovered in the 18, 1800s. Uh, it was discovered a long time ago. The benefit of that is it's very relaxing and helps you do things like astral project or study or meditate. Uh, as far as uh, those particular tones being necessary, I would not say they're necessary, but anything that relaxes you would be helpful. Burnt, lighting a candle would be helpful. Uh, if that relaxes you, playing certain music, if that relaxes you, um, any kind of smells that relax you, like uh, some kind of oils, anything like that would be helpful because they relax you. So, if we can't retain our mortal body after actually projected, how do we really dead? Can you repeat the question, please? Okay, what if we can't retain our mortal body after actually projected? Are we really dead after that? Are, 
Uh, did you say, are we dead after we astral project? No. Aren't you okay, what if, okay, what if we can't return our mortal body? I'm sorry. I, to I, a mortal body. I'm not understanding. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, after getting astral projected. After we astral okay, projected. After get, yeah, after getting astral projected, what yes. if we can't return our mortal body? Physical. What if we no, cannot? Body. What if we cannot return to our physical body? Yeah, that's, that's physical body. Okay, okay so are we really dead? Or? So you're asking, what if we cannot return to our physical body after we astral project? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Good okay, question. Are we dead then? Oh yes, if you cannot return, you are dead. But you're not going to die as a result of astral projection. <laughs> so that's a good question. <laughs> Technically, you are correct. Yes. <laughs> So, but but astral what projection is the will. Soul and astral? I'm sorry. And then what is the difference between soul and astral projected entity? So the difference between traveling in with your soul when you're dead and traveling with your soul when you're just astral projecting and alive is that the question? The new question. So. Yes, yes. Okay, if that is the new question, let me, let me take your first question first. Okay, so astral projection will not kill you ever. It will not kill you. Uh, so you, you're connected by the silver cord to your to your physical body. If your physical body dies during that time, as a complete coincidence, not related to astral projection, just heart attack or something, it was just your, your time to die, coincidence only, not caused by astral projection, the silver cord would then become severed and you would become, uh, you would be what we would call dead, but you would still be, uh, your astral body would still be intact. The difference then would be that you would not be returning to your body because your physical body would be dead. You would simply go, you would go on to another realm. Now, some people stay in this realm. They become what we call ghosts or entities or uh, spirits because they linger around this world. Let's say you died and you, you didn't want to leave your friends or you had something you felt you had to do. You would stay around this at this physical world. Maybe you've seen the movie The Sixth Sense. Uh, the Sixth Sense uh, was a great movie, not in that it was reality, but in that it portrayed the idea of souls lingering after they die. So the, the difference that you would experience would not be much, except you would never go back to your physical body after you die, and you would then ascend once you let go of this physical realm to, to other realms. Good question. So, one by one, we will be taking a question. All the questions are going randomly. So just pick up your hand. Okay, first you ask. Uh, your chance is over. Sir, sir, I want to ask that can astral projection help us to find questions like who am I? What is my goal? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in the astral world, you can. <laughs> You can meditate. That's a, another practical use of astral projection. So, uh, so, so you uh, can, sir, uh, drugs like uh, drugs like marijuana or even alcohol, even they are supposed to relax the body, take the uh, reduce the brain frequencies and take them to the alpha state. I want to know if doing such a thing would be dangerous while trying to astral project. It's not dangerous. It's hard to find anything that's too dangerous when you astral project, but it wouldn't be helpful at all. Uh, you know, I, I've talk to people who've smoked marijuana before astral projecting or drank alcohol before astral projecting. Um, you know, these things in, in one sense can help because if you're drunk enough, your, your physical body may separate anyway from your astral body, <clears throat> but that's not very helpful. <clears throat> that's not very practical. And it's not very helpful for uh, meditating and finding out who you are and what you want to do. And it, it just, your, your thoughts become cloudy, so it's not very practical. Uh, can we enter someone else's body during it after the button in astral projection? <laughs> what was the question? I'm sorry. So uh, can we enter someone else's body uh, in astral projection? Well, there is astral intercourse, uh, for example. If you Google Steve G. Jones astral sex, uh, you will see uh, an, a lecture I gave on that. Uh, so that's an entirely different topic, but yes. So look at when you get home tonight. Look at Steve G. Jones Astral Sex on YouTube, and you'll see there's nothing visual about it. It's not pornographic, uh, but you'll see a, a talk that I gave about that when I was in uh, Malaysia. Uh, I gave a talk about that, and it's recorded on YouTube. Yes, sir. 
Sir, is it possible to go somewhere or meet someone we have never met before or uh, somewhere we've never gone before in astral projection? Yes, you can go anywhere you want. You can go places that you haven't gone before. Uh, you, can, for example, I haven't been to uh, the pyramids of Egypt, uh, but I can go there in my astral, in my astral body. I can, I can travel there. So you can go anywhere you want, uh, and it doesn't have to be limited to uh, this planet either. So it becomes very interesting after a while. And uh, any other questions? Again, if you want more information about this, I've got a the website. Can there be any, the, can there be any relation between deja vu and astral projection? Uh, sometimes, well, deja vu usually. My understanding of deja vu is that uh, you experience something and you you think you've experienced it before, but you're not quite sure. Is that what you're talking about when you say deja vu? Yeah. Okay, because in the movie The Matrix, they, they use the word deja vu differently to mean something completely different, which was just an action repeating itself. Uh, so, yes, given that definition of deja vu, sometimes that's an example of astral projection. You think a thought, or you have an experience, you think, I've experienced that before, I've thought that before, but I don't know where. That could have been, the time that you experienced or thought it before, could have been in the astral world. Three more questions, last three questions. Sir, I wonder ask that when we are astral projecting, can we c control our own body, own physical body? Uh, you can, but you have sleep paralysis happening, so there's there's nothing to control. I mean, your 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 autonomic functions still happen, your breathing, your heart rate, and so forth. But the the f parts that you would normally consciously control, your arms, your, your muscles. Uh, your voluntary muscles, uh, those those you will not be able to control because because of sleep paralysis, uh, you are you are perfectly still, which is good because otherwise you may walk away and that's not good. So, um, sir, uh, we have the stories that we have heard about uh, that people call spirits to visit boat. Visa boat that is O U I J A visa boat. Which are they you? true? Like. People can uh, are those astral bodies that people call through is a board. Uh, you're saying do we contact the astral bodies with the Ouija board? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sometimes yes, because uh, with the Ouija board, uh, and you can uh, look something else you can look up on YouTube. Steve G. Jones, Door to the Dead, Door to the Dead, Steve G. Jones. Uh, so where I went to a place where they were they were using a Ouija board to contact a, a disembodied spirit, someone who had died, and was haunting the house. They were they were bothering the house, and so with the Ouija board, yes, you can contact uh, disembodied spirits, people who have died but not yet ascended. They're still in this. Uh, this realm. So, is it the present world only which we can travel? Oh, you're asking if we can go to the past or the future? Yes. Uh, I believe that you could potentially see the future. That gets more advanced. Uh, that gets into a discussion about the Akashic Records. Uh, so you may want to look up Akashic Records. Um, and again, you can Google Steve G. Jones Akashic Records and, and see videos about that and, and read about it. Uh, the Akashic Records are records of everything that has happened and will happen. You can access those uh, through the astral world. Or again, if you want to just check out the website that I have on it, which is, again, the theartofastralprojection.com, I do address that as well.